Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to do a quick leather project. I have very little experience in what I'm doing, so it had to be simple, made from what I had in the shop, and it had to be functional. I came up with a belt-mounted sticker holder. It's not so much about what I am making, but more about the process I use to make it. So let's watch the video and see how I managed to make it to the end. So here are the stickers I need a holder for, and this is the prototype I came up with. It's full of flaws, but I was able to sort out what I needed to fix as well as the jigs and overall process that made sense to me to get to the end. I started out with some plywood blanks that I ripped on the table saw. I wanted to get really precise parts for the leather molds I need to make, so I decided to use the CNC machine. I also needed some more practice with the machine. It's been sitting in storage for almost a year and a half and I'm very rusty. I need to make a female and a male mold for the leather. Each piece is sized differently and they need to fit quite well. Once the parts were cut, I gave any piece that would be in contact with the leather a quick sand, and I also slightly rounded over any sharp corners. This will aid in forming the leather as well as not damaging it, and it will also make them look really nice. Once all the pieces were cut, I could assemble the forms. I glued and screwed them together. I might have been able to get away without using the glue, but later on I am going to use one of these to make another pattern, and without the glue the form would have fallen apart as you will see. With the patterns built I can cut up the leather pieces I need. This is vegetable tan leather that's about an eighth of an inch thick. These holders are going to be half rounds and to help cut parts and make it easy I'm going to use a circle cutting jig on the bandsaw. I end up using this jig and saw for almost all of the cutting on this project. To start, I drilled a hole to fit the pin and the circle jig in each of the back pieces. This hole will be concealed by the belt clip once installed, so it's no big deal. Once the backs were cut out, I could start forming the leather. I used some saran wrap on the forms to help it keep them dry, and also to aid in taking them apart later. This will also help with not transferring the wood grain from the molds onto the leather. I soak the leather in water for about a minute, then pull it out and get it started in the form. I'm just using some woodworking clamps to clamp it. These will stay on until they are ready to pull apart. Then I just set them off to the side to do their thing. I didn't really know how long to let them sit, so I decided overnight would probably be okay. I didn't want to risk ruining them by not giving them enough time. The next morning, I pulled the clamps and removed the pieces. They came out relatively easy, and I felt good about the tolerances I used on the form. They have really good shape to them, and I was quite pleased with the result. I set them out in the sun to start drying, and I eventually moved them inside to dry for the night before moving forward. The next step was to punch all of the holes for the hardware. I just used some inexpensive punches and cutting dies that I picked up on Amazon. After that, I could cut the molded pieces into semicircles. I used one of the leftover form parts to support the piece and ran them through the saw. And then I could use another leftover form piece to cut the rough outer circle to match the size of the backs I cut earlier. Once assembled, these will get recut to final size. Next up was coloring them. I decided to dye each one a different color. I dyed them as quick as I could, then set them outside to dry. It's really potent stuff and probably not too healthy to breathe. And I also didn't really like the look of just one coat, so I ended up doing two, which meant that I had to wait longer before I could start putting them together. 
Once the dye dried, I used some leather rivets and fastened the belt clip to the backs. I had to try this a few times before I got it to work well. Next time, I would use some different hardware. I don't think this was the ideal choice, but it's all I had to work with. With the clips attached, I could start assembly. To make things easier, I burnished the edge of the pouches first. Burnishing is just polishing and rounding over the edge to give it a smooth feel as well as an aesthetic look. I use this product called Tokenol. There are also other products to use for this, and if you have to, you can just use a bit of water. After that, I laid out a glue line as well as a stitch line on the pouch. And then I lightly sanded the smooth part of the back to make sure that I got a good glue bond. For gluing, I am using this barge all-purpose cement. Now this is some potent stuff as well, so if you decide to use this, please exercise some caution. Despite that, it is a really good and strong glue. Once it tacked up, I put the two halves together and used my new favorite clamps to hold things tight for a few minutes. After they were firmly set, I could go trim them down to final size. I did it this way to allow some variance in assembly, and trimming them later gives it a good clean look and makes it easier. This is where the molding jig came in handy I mentioned earlier. I used a circle that fit in the already used form that I drilled a hole in the center of it. And that hole will line things up on the circle cutting jig. This is why I glued the molds together. Without the glue, once the circle was cut, the mold would have fallen apart because the screws were at the corners to prevent scarring the part when I molded it. This really worked out well and took a lot of the headache out of creating consistent multiple pieces. After cutting the pieces to size, I beveled all the edges and used the die daubers that I saved in the plastic baggies to dye the fresh edges. All that was left now was to punch some stitching holes on the line I made earlier and get them stitched up. I am using some waxed stitching thread. This is Ritza brand with an R. It's 0.8 millimeter and it's white in color. It will contrast great with the colors I used. Now the size of the thread definitely affects how the stitches look, so I did a few practice runs with three different sizes that I had, and I settled on this one. I bought the thread and leather, as well as a lot of the leather specific tools for this project from Weaver Leather. You can find cheaper stuff on Amazon, but Weaver's basic tools are pretty cost effective. The stitch I am using is called a saddle stitch. I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to do this stitch as there are a lot of great resources available on different stitching methods to use. And here is the finished product. I think these turned out great and I am very happy. So I ended up making six of these in total. I find that for me repetition makes great practice and since I'm new to this it made sense to make more than one. I had a lot of fun on this and I can't wait to work with leather again. 
I want to thank you for watching the video. I hope it inspires you to try something new. If you found some value today and feel I am worthy, please like and subscribe. My small channel really appreciates the support. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.